took one out of her purse and passed her another one, and she wet that one, and I think she wet the third one. And we thought, boy, she's really repenting. Isn't that something? She's really repenting. And after the service was all over, we discovered she had lost her boyfriend and she went the order to cry. <laughs> That's confession, all right. That's tears, all right. But it isn't repentance. Oh, my God, help me. Amen. I'll tell you, repentance is, a, is a quite a step. Yes, sir. It's a long one and a hard one. I said it's a hard one. And I saw some folk around my days make some hard ones. I know of a man that called for a preacher to come to his house. He was an alcoholic, and his wife had left him, and his daughter had left him, and he said, what in the world am I going to do? And the preacher sat and talked to him, and then he said, do you mind if I get my Bible? And he said, no, sir, you can get anything you want to. He went out in the car and got the Bible and brought it in and read the Bible to him, what the Bible had to say. And that's what he said, Mr. Will you pray for me? He said, provide you take that ale that you got there and dump her down the sink. He said, I'll pray for you. And he took the tops off of them bottles just one at a time, and you couldn't you see that good stuff going down the sink? Good, 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 down, and then on top of another bottle, another bottle, another bottle, another bottle. I, that for a drinking man, that's hard business, pouring that stuff down the sink. See it? And I remember another place I was in, over in Devon or over in Marysville area, uh, no kind of road, and had meetings for Waldo in a tent. And uh, quite a few come to the altar, quite a few got the Holy Ghost. We had a good baptism there, maybe more than one. But this night, this girl, this day, this girl come to the altar and cried and prayed and worshiped the Lord, and that was all right. God forgave her as far as that goes, and uh, the baptism coming up, and she said to Waldo, she said, I want to get baptized. And Waldo looked at her and he said, sorry, lady, I can't baptize you. And she says, why? I've been to the altar and so and so and I prayed and repented and so and so. He said, you're living common law. And she was only a young lady too. He said, you're living common law. I can't baptize you like that. And he talked to me about it and I said, no, sir. We, had, we dumped two that day, couldn't baptize them. One we had. Amen. But anyway, she, 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 she was up there. Well, matter of fact, she had a young lady that went to the altar. And uh, she was going to get baptized. And I went over to her and I said, are you going to get baptized? And I said, you can't get baptized. I said, you're not married to that fellow. And the girl looked at me and she said, Mama's married. And I said, oh, no, I happen to know she isn't. She said, Mama, ain't you married? No, she said, I'm not. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, repentance may cost something. That's right. Yes, sure. See it? Three. May cost something. And we went right, right up to the baptism Sunday. And Sunday morning she come to Waldo and she said, I'm ready to be baptized. I packed my suitcase this morning, left the guy, and I'm up to so-and-so's now. Now, now. now, that wasn't easy for her to kiss him goodbye and pack her clothes and get out of there. But that's repentance, brother. She's not, she's not confession, she's repentance. Amen. Yes, sir, break up the bottle, take back the thing you stole. Praise God. Yes, sir, it did, it did. Hallelujah, get clear of your pride. You know the thing that keeps a lot of people, you know there's something keeps more people from God than the liquor store? And that's pride. And God says he hates it. He just hates it. God said he hates it. Pride sticks out all over somebody. You excuse me, you excuse me, will you? But I was down to St. John a few years ago, and this lady come over to me, growed up married, and she said, Hello, Brother Dudley, glad to see you. And I said, I don't know you, I don't think. Oh, yes, she says, you know me. You prayed with me, she said, in Great Rapids. Yes, remember at the rally, you prayed with me. I said, I still don't know you. I'm sorry. I can't put a name on you. And she said, well, I'm so-and-so's daughter, used to be. I didn't know her, because when I knew her, she was a blonde, and now she's a redhead. <laughs> oh, Lord, I, some people, you meet them, and you say, don't you know me? God bless you, how would I know you? <laughs> God, yes, sir. Hello. Hello. I don't believe you need to tell God that you're
you're dissatisfied with the color of your hair. I'm dissatisfied, God, with the color of my hair. I'm dissatisfied, God, with my fingernails being white. I, they should have been red. Lord, they should have been real red. I'm dissatisfied. Get out of that! I, I tell them everywhere I go, it ain't the ear buttons, and it ain't the beads, and it ain't the makeup. That's not no trouble. It's not that. Don't blame it on that. This ain't that awful. Look, 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 look. No, that ain't the trouble. The trouble's down in here. It's the pride that caused you to do it. And God's after it, and he wants me to preach against that. Hallelujah. God bless you. A few gray hairs wouldn't hurt you. My Bible, my Bible says gray hairs is honorable. Hello. Yeah. We're having a revival, I guess. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. And while I'm talking, I got something to tell you. A revival isn't out there. A revival's in here. And then it breaks out there. Yeah. Amen. You can't revive a fire, an old stove that's dead out. Huh? You had an old wood stove and been out for two days and somebody come along and say, would you revive the fire? There's nothing there to revive. But if you had a few coals in her, you could get an old hat and fan her and blow her a little bit and she'd come too. That's revival. Yeah, revival ain't out there. Revival's in here. Praise to God. And so... Back to again, there's some things that we need to confess ourselves. If a Christian confess, God, I'm saying it again, God never asked a sinner to repent, a sinner to confess his sin. No, he asked us to confess ours, and that's pretty hard. We say, old oh, fellow, you better confess up. Old oh, guy, you better confess up. Huh? But boy, she's pretty hard on us fellas. You say, how do you know? Because I've had to do it. And you young fellas, you precious young girls and boys, look at me. When you see one of us old fellas that's been on the way for 40 or 50 or so-and-so years or 30 or 28 years, you don't have to say it. You can write it down in the back of your school book if you want to. Said there's a fellow that's done some repenting and confessing and some praying. Yes, sir. If they're on fire for God, they have. You can mark her down. We didn't get here by ourselves. We had to confess and say, God, I shouldn't have said that. Lord, forgive me. God, I shouldn't have done that. God, forgive me. Lord, help me. I'll not go back there again. Somebody's liable to get talking about me. Lord, I won't be back there again. Huh? Yes, sir. A lot of confession, a lot of repenting. If you see us going on, us old fellas. Praise God. And it, it, it costs a lot. I got to get going here. Boys, I'll be here till 12 o'clock tonight. And that'll be awful. Where was I going? Praise Let's see. Hallelujah. Let's see. Where was I going? I was going back to 900 somewhere. All right. Repentance. Now here's, I'm not going to read the whole story. I'm just going to read a bit. You know that God sent Jonah down to Nineveh and told him 40 days and Nineveh be destroyed. You don't know all that, don't you? 40 days and you're going to get her. Yes, sir. And Nineveh heard the story and they believed it. And he said in the 8th verse, the 3rd chapter, But let men and beasts be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? Now he said, God, you can't tell God might repent. Okay. And turn away from his fierce anger, and we perish not. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented. Now what did they both do? Get awful sore and cry and confess and wet a handkerchief and bawl at the altar? 
No, they didn't. I'll tell you plain what they done. Nineveh changed their attitude toward God, and God changed his attitude toward Nineveh. That's right. And repentance ain't a lot of confession or boo-hooing, and you can do it dried-eyed. Now, somebody doubts that, but I said it a long time ago, and I'm still saying it. You can repent dry-eyed. Amen. It's a change of attitude. Goodbye, old world, I'm oh, through. Amen. Goodbye, sin, I'm through. Goodbye, old man, I'm through. Goodbye, old woman, I'm packing my suitcase. Goodbye, cigarettes. Goodbye, moonshine. Goodbye, dope. Goodbye, dance hall. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. goodbye. Brother, God bless you. When you say the last goodbye, you'll get the Holy Ghost coming down the aisle. Because God loves repentance. And repentance ain't a lot of boo-hoo and repentance a change of attitude. Hallelujah. And the reason that some people come and get an experience with God and then go back again in two, three years, praise God, they didn't repent. I know a man upriver. Now, I prayed with him, and he had a genuine deliverance from dope, a genuine deliverance, and liquor testified, worship, sees hands up in the service, and I went home on Monday. A young fellow said he's back at her again. And I said, dear God, he didn't repent. In the book of Corinthians, you read it. He said, repentance, what carefulness it wrought in you. What Bahamut desire. Careful. No, no, not going over there again. I repented of that. Not going to get up there again. Huh? Come on down to the, what, Legion. Saturday night with me. No, I'm not going to Legion. I repented of that. All down. Goodbye, Legion. <laughs> For good forever. Oh, after God delivered me from alcohol and everything that was crazy and wrong, I was down in Chatham and just a little while afterwards, and had been broke. I was broke and had to go buy them, but that day I wasn't broke. I had a few dollars in my pocket, and I walked by the liquor stores on that side of the street, and I was walking up this side, and there it was, government controlled. Government controlled by I. They never controlled that stuff, never will. Government controlled. I knew what it was, liquor store. And I stopped straight up on this side of the street and I shook my fist at that old liquor store. And I said, I got your beat, I got your beat, I got your beat. Hey, hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I walked right by her with money in my pocket. One time I couldn't get by it, I'd steal your money and buy it. Oh, thank God for repentance. Thank God. Thank God. 48 years passed now, and I never had to say, God, forgive me for swearing. Forgive me, Lord, for blackguarding. Forgive me for this. Forgive me for smoking. Forgive me for drinking. Forgive me, Lord, for stealing. Forgive me, Lord. Oh, I never did. 48 years gone by. You know why? Because that day in the shed, old C.B. repented. Come out of her, and a preacher didn't know a thing, never held a conversation. And I burnt two packs of cards and burnt a cribbage board and took the dancing tunes off of the graphophone. Why don't eat them there two steps and waltz for her? All done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir, all done. Took the two stories out. The only two story, the true story that ever I wrote is this one. This is true, boys. That's the only true story there is. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. For over 48 years ago, oh, I thank God for the spirit of repentance. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise and so, down in here, now, that's pretty good. And I got to get going. I got to get going. And God said, I said in the start that God only asked you to do one thing. Do you hear me? And you said, what's that? He asked you to repent. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's a long step and a hard one in a lot of cases. A lot of cases. Huh? I know one man that burnt a man's store down, purposely set her to fire and burnt her down. And he got to God, and a few mornings afterwards, he walked up, and a little while afterwards, he went up, not a few mornings, took a little while.